speaker or not who is here before you. Brian, I thank you for your leadership. The podium is yours. Thank you, Ben. Good morning, everybody. In 2017, approximately 72,000 Americans lost their lives to drug overdoses. Behind every loss to addiction are families and friends who mourn and communities that suffer. Combating the opioid epidemic is a significant priority for the Trump administration, for the Department of Justice, and for the American people. We're employing every tool at our disposal to address this crisis, and today marks a milestone in that effort. Today, we're announcing charges against 60 defendants, including 31 doctors, seven pharmacists, eight nurse practitioners, and seven other licensed medical professionals, most of whom are charged with felony controlled substance violations. These cases were brought across 12 judicial districts, including the nine districts that comprise the Appalachian Regional Prescription Opioid, or ARPO, strike force, as well as the Eastern District of Pennsylvania and the Eastern District of Louisiana. As charged, these cases involve approximately 350,000 opioid prescriptions and more than 32 million pills, the equivalent of a dose of opioids for every man, woman, and child across the states of Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, and West Virginia combined. In addition to these cases, we're also announcing the expansion of the ARPO strike force into a 10th federal district today, the Western District of Virginia. I emphasize that the charges that we're announcing today are merely allegations, and each defendant is presumed innocent unless and until they are proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. With that said, it's important to understand how we arrived at today's significant law enforcement action. Over the past decade, seasoned prosecutors from Maine Justice and United States Attorney's offices, analysts, and law enforcement agents have remarkable success in fighting health care fraud through the Medicare Fraud Strike Forces operating in federal districts throughout the United States. The Strike Force model is based upon collaboration across government agencies, reliance on data-driven analysis, and the use of traditional law enforcement investigative techniques to quickly move cases from investigation to indictment and to conviction. Last year, the criminal division, led by Joe Beamsterbor, who, who heads our healthcare fraud unit, and Matt Miner, Deputy Assistant Attorney General in my office, proposed a new strike force to address the opioid problem plaguing the Appalachian region. Our recommendation was based in large part on data analysis performed by our analytics team in the criminal division in Washington. In 2017 alone, the states involved in today's surge, again, Alabama, Kentucky, Ohio, Tennessee, and West Virginia, reported more than 10,260 drug overdose fatalities. With the full support of then Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who, as Ben said, described the opioid epidemic as the most important domestic law enforcement priority of our time, we quickly reached out to various stakeholders, including those represented on the stage behind me here today. It included state and federal law enforcement partners, the HHS OIG, DEA, and the FBI, along with the United States attorneys who are here with us today, as well as assistance from the state and Medicaid fraud control units. And I can tell you, I could not be prouder to stand shoulder to shoulder with the group of people who are behind me and the people who are in this room today as we attempt to address this problem. The response was overwhelmingly positive. Our agency partners provided resources from far and wide. More than 300 law enforcement agents made today's action possible. With participation from 13 DEA field offices, 11 HHS OIG field offices, and six FBI field offices. With the help of all these great partners, including United States Attorneys Donald Cochran in the Middle District of Tennessee and Rob Duncan in the Eastern District of Kentucky, who offered space for the hubs for ARPO to be able to do their work in their districts, we put together a quick plan, a plan for quick execution. And the speed with which our teams move forward has been exemplary. Just five months ago, we formally announced the formation of the ARPO Strike Force, and by December, we began surging some of our most dedicated and experienced prosecutors from around the country, from existing strike forces, into the region to collaborate with local assistant United States attorneys and law enforcement. 
Recognizing the need to move quickly but cautiously, our teams first employed data analysis to identify the most serious targets for further investigation. We also took careful steps to identify and weed out legitimate prescribers, such as those providing cancer and hospice treatment in the region. Our teams next employed traditional law enforcement techniques, such as subpoenas, search warrants, undercover operations, and witness interviews to build the cases we're announcing today. Cases like one involving a doctor in Dayton, Ohio, who at one time allegedly was among the highest prescribers of opioids in the entire state. That doctor allegedly operated a pill mill and funneled prescriptions to the pharmacy housed in his waiting room, which dispensed over 1.75 million pills in a two-year period. This doctor has been charged with, among other things, unlawfully dispensing controlled substances, including prescription opioids. Or a case in Kentucky where a doctor has been charged with unlawfully writing prescription opioid, uh, prescriptions for opioids in exchange for cash to Facebook friends and people who sent messenger requests to his office assistant without ever examining many of these individuals. Or a case in Tennessee where a nurse practitioner was charged for his alleged role in a conspiracy to unlawfully dispense controlled substances, including prescription opioids. The conspiracy is alleged to have involved upwards of 100 patients per day and also included prescribing opioids to pregnant women, cash payments for prescriptions, and the writing of over 10,000 prescriptions for controlled substances, including nearly one million opioid pills. As important as these prosecutions are, we know that enforcement alone will not end the crisis. The Trump administration's three-pronged approach to this problem recognizes that prevention and treatment are also key. By removing illegal prescribers and distributors from the system, we're working to prevent the next generation of addicts. We're also focusing on treatment. Let me be clear. If so-called medical professionals behave like drug dealers, the Department of Justice is going to treat them like drug dealers. But when medical professionals violate their oaths, we face new challenges. For that reason, we've partnered with state and federal health professionals to ensure that treatment is made available for anyone who needs it. In connection with today's law enforcement operation, we also put in place a community outreach plan. That plan is designed to ensure that affected patients have continued access to care and are at the same time directed to legitimate medical professionals in the area. Working together, DOJ, HHS through SAMHSA and OIG, CDC and all five state departments of health are deploying federal and state level strategies today to address patient harm and to ensure the continuity of care for affected individuals. This includes resources on the ground at impacted medical offices and hotlines staffed by professionals who are able to direct those in need to the right resources. This information is available in our press release and is being provided to the media as well. I encourage anyone impacted to please reach out for help right away. If we can save one life in connection with this law enforcement operation, that alone will have made it worth the effort. Working in collaboration across government, we are stopping corrupt medical professionals in their tracks, providing services to those in need, and working to prevent the next tragic loss and the next grieving family. Today's takedown represents the single largest prescription opioid law enforcement operation in history, with the highest number, number of medical professionals ever charged by the department for prescription opioid related crimes. But as significant as today's announcement is, everyone should know that our work will not end here. We're going to continue to remain focused on this problem that has impacted and claimed far, far too many lives. Finally, let me add, this is a truly a team effort. Only through continued cooperation and collaboration will we bring down the number of opioid prescriptions, the number of opioid deaths, and the addiction rate in these affected communities and across the region. I wanna thank everyone here today. As I said, I couldn't be prouder to stand shoulder to shoulder with these men and women. Um, I wanna thank U.S. Attorney Glassman for hosting us today, uh, as well as the eight, uh, eight other United States attorneys and law enforcement partners on the stage.